Okay. Ask us anything. Round three. Yesterday, Tim by Timothy, I mean Nathaniel talked about sex before marriage, to do or not to do. So check that out. And today we have a question coming from what's her name? Yulia McKenna, I think, from Alaska. She asked Lee, basically. <laughs> I don't know where I'm mixing these words up, but they're kind of cool. Um, she basically asked, in a long-winded way, if we're all about the simple pleasures of life, why do we charge so much to go on a retreat and or become an ambassador? And what a great question that is, because I know for me, anytime I'm online and I see people promoting themselves or what they do or products, I automatically go to the skeptic place of thinking, wow, does this guy really uh, believe in his products or what he's trying to offer me or does he just want my money? Well, That's great. That's great. I wanted to touch on that real quick. Doubt could be the shadow side of faith. So maybe to the degree that you allow yourself to doubt is to the degree that you allow yourself to put faith in people. So good job, Nathaniel. Yeah, thanks for the question, Yulia. I think it's a really good one. Um, and uh, what, you, what were you going to say about yeah, that? Yeah, so, um, so you guys know where we're coming from. We have over 35,000 uh, subscribers on YouTube mm. and 25,000 followers on Facebook. Raise up. So as you can imagine, we get a lot of emails, messages, inquiries, people wanting to meet us and join mm. our movement. And without sacrifice, yeah, yes. Yeah. So, we, and it's literally not possible for us to meet the meet the meet the needs of all these people without us sacrificing our lives of what makes us who we are. So, it's true that our Rob Ross is a business. We make money doing it, but it just so happens to be a business that we wholeheartedly believe in. So we have to find a way to narrow down the amount of people that we offer our services to, and the way we do that is by investing in those who invest in themselves. Mm. showing a token of investment through money, which is just showing us that they are willing to put energy and effort towards our process. We actually have a saying that payment is part of the therapy, meaning the more, we actually believe by help, we could help you more by charging you more because mm. you're gonna you're gonna take it that much more seriously. Yeah, it does seem like the less that we've charged, the less that committed that person is. Well, we I think anyone experience. with a business would tell you that. Like we, we have so many friends that are entrepreneurs that run their own businesses. And it's a very strong trend that what people put in is what they're going to get out. Mm -hmm. And when you give away stuff for free or really cheap or really good deals, you won't believe what kind of client, the most challenging clients in the world. Yeah. They're the biggest headache compared to uh, the people they're used to investing in themselves like they want others to invest in them. That was a thing, a lot of this we were inspired by our friend Brandon Hawk and I did a podcast with him that I would highly recommend checking out if you want more information and edutainment about this subject. But he has a cool story about how he was on the path to starting his business and one day he went to a conference. Uh, it was kind of one of those build your business type of conferences and the guy was giving out the big packages and I think it was about $80,000. And something overcame Brandon. Brandon's like, I'm done with it. Like, I'm sick of going halfway with myself. I want to invest in myself like I want others to invest in me. So he took that package and he said that night was the night that he felt like he finally had the deed to his life, to take control and to get what he wanted. He finally put the value in himself. And uh, yeah, I definitely believe that. I think uh, JP's even uh, a psych... I'm not sure how much I'm supposed to talk about this, but if I remember the story correctly, one of our friends, JP, a psychologist, goes to see him, and JP was talking to him about that, mm -hmm. about the payment, and like, man, sometimes I give away the sessions, and they just don't seem to get much out of it. Mm. And the guy's like, well, JP, you know, I've been in this business a long time, and payment was part of therapy. Woo! Yeah, I mean, think about it. Think about the last time you paid a significant amount of money for something. You valued that. You, uh, you made sure that you got your money's worth. And I can promise you that if we were to offer what we do for free, that you would, the people that have gone through the process would have gotten less, less out of it. And let me tell you something. What we do or what happens at our retreats, it gets uncomfortable. Sometimes it gets real, really fun comfortable. Mm. And it's those moments where we start to feel ourselves like you know, our heart starts racing and we start to get a little nervous. If we're not totally committed to the program or the mm. retreat, and it's very easy for one for us to want to leave that situation to distance ourselves. So, 
again, we truly believe that what we doing and that what we're doing is transformative for people's lives, and we want them to stick through the fun, comfortable times because we know that's where the most most growth takes place. Yeah, yeah, I really like what Nathaniel <laughs> touched on in the beginning about weeding out the people. Because also another awesome thing that Brandon enlightened us upon, and I totally believe, is that when you give beyond your capacity, you make the receiver a thief. And yes, we are three people with hundreds of thousands of people that know about us that want to get involved with our lives, and we are offering something so valuable. I mean, I can't tell you how many times people have come to one of our retreats or has become an ambassador, and they say it was one of the greatest investments of their lives. So now, what do we do? You know, I'm not, I'm not rolling around in the money. We'll get to that subject in a minute. Um, I kind of talked about this earlier. That isn't it funny? The All right. So the camera cut off for the second time. So Timothy and Nathaniel just didn't want to give beyond their capacity. So I thought it was very appropriate. And I was in the middle of saying something that is also very organic for me to finish this off. So hopefully... You Danimal fans, and even the ones that don't like me, will get that much more out of it by having a more focused stream of consciousness coming from one person. That being said, what I was saying, I was alluding to the idea that here I am, I'm not the one rolling around in the dough. I uh, probably have the least amount of money currently, well, I, more than probably, I definitely have the least amount of money currently from the Rob Ross. And here I am, <laughs> the one that wants to talk about it most, and I thought that was really uh, fitting because, you know, if you've ever been to the grocery store and this has happened, or the gym, and it's like the person that's like the most out of shape or the least fit or the one that seems like they've practiced the least are the ones that want to give you advice on your diet or your fitness routine. Have you ever mentioned that? Have you ever noticed that? If, uh, if you have, comment below. I'd love to hear your story about that. Just the other day I was in the spa at the gym and this guy he's obviously uh, neglected his fitness habits for some time now and he had a lot to say about fitness and I was like oh, interesting but I'm not condemning these people I'm actually celebrating them because I think um, we teach what we want to master or we teach what we want to walk through we teach what we want to learn and I do think that one of the best ways to learn is teaching that teaching is on top of the learning pyramid so here I am I'm uh, this is something that's been a lot in my heart and mind lately and I want to share my answer to this question even more, even more so than we've already done. And um, that being said, it's a little, it's a little it broke up the flow there. But I do want to talk about that. Yeah, the reality of it is that we live in the United States and um, in this capitalistic society where they're just printing money off. Oh man, y'all even get to see the water example. Man, y'all missed a lot of good stuff. I'll try to do it again. <laughs> but um, there's no shortage of money. And I'll give you two. I'm gonna give you two like metaphor analogies about that. Paint some pictures that might make it more clear or applicable to you. Which is that before we were raw vegans, we probably were under the impression that getting uh, you know we're not raw vegan anymore, but we did that experiment and that we became experts in um, receiving and storing and having an abundance of ripe bananas. But for the average Joe, uh, only shopping at the local grocery store, if you live in Alabama or Mississippi, you're going to think they might, where do you, where did these Rob Ross get all these ripe bananas? I don't know how to get them. And my point is, as long as you believe that you don't know where to get the ripe bananas, that there's a shortage of ripe bananas, you're not going to have ripe bananas. But we learned that we can just go to the farmer's market, we can get a huge box, buy in bulk, let them ripen, get the organic ones. We know how to, the system to ripen bananas, how to store them, how to eat them, and keep the ripe bananas coming in. There's no shortage of ripe bananas. And I believe money works the same way. There's no shortage of money. Yes, it's true that 1% or roughly that 1% of the United States owns 99% of the wealth because they've learned how to do it. They don't, I guarantee they don't look at money and it's like, man, there's not enough money. They look like there's so much money they don't know what to do with because they've learned how to receive it. They've learned how to obtain it. And the first step of realizing that is that we live in a world of abundance. And if you keep having this scarcity complex where you believe there's not enough money or there's not enough bananas for you, that's going to continue to be your reality. So you need to shift that, first of all. And the other example that I was doing out there with Nathaniel, he had that cup of water, and I showed him that. If he, if I want that water, let's say water represents money in this picture, and he pours it into my hand, and I hold my hand out like this, I'm trying to grab it, I'm trying to like grab water going into my hand, I get, I'm left with nothing. I'm just left with a wet hand. But 
and that's because I'm trying to grip it too tight. But if I hold my hands out like this, where I can let my cup flow over, I can hold maybe a hundred times the amount of wa the water or the, the money. And that's because I'm letting it come and I'm letting it go. Um, we talked about tithing, how we're believers in that. And funny enough, it seems like the more money that we give away, the more money we have access to. Isn't that something? Let, let your, wrap your mind around that and to realize that a real money problem is when you might not be able to give your money away. That's that's when you know you have a money problem when you can't give it away or you can't invest in yourself like you want others to invest in you. Um, and that also gets to the subject of, I want to be very clear that we are not uh, equating money with wealth. Wealth, I do not believe true wealth comes from money. Money is a representation, representation of energy. Wealth is a representation of the amount of gratitude and appreciation you have from day to day. There are plenty of people that have so much money in their bank account, but they are poor and they are lacking in appreciation and gratitude and vice versa. There are so many people that are full. I mean, they are have no money. They're broke as a joke, but they are having so much fun. They have so much appreciation and gratitude. And Timothy painted this picture very clear when he went to Africa, to Kenya, and you saw those kids playing soccer with a ball made of like trash, a ball made of like plastic bags. Those kids were so rich in heart, rich in spirit. And I do not want anyone to mistake in this video that we're saying, I'm going to reiterate that money equals wealth. I believe money, I mean, uh, gratitude and appreciation equal wealth. That's true wealth. That you can be rich in heart, you can be rich in spirit, you can be rich in your bank account or not, but those richness in heart and spirit, appreciation and gratitude represents real wealth. I made some notes and that's why I'm going to be looking down real quick. I want to make sure we get this all done for uh, Yulia and for anyone else that's interested. Um, yeah, just highly recommend investing in yourself like you, like you want people to invest in you. And then watch, watch the shift that takes place. That takes some faith. you got to walk by faith. But uh, don't get too caught up in the scarcity complex. And that um, we talked about anyone that, yeah, that owns a business, the worst customers are sometimes the ones that are the least investing. Um, and that, uh, there's a cool idea about Brad Bland, the guy that wrote Radical Honesty, has a book that I'm looking at up here. I haven't read the, the whole thing at all, but just read parts of it. The Corporate Cannibal Cookbook about how he says if we can get rid of that 1% that owns 99% of the wealth, then, the, then there would be no lack. The money would be distributed equally. And my point of that is we are not that part of that 1% that owns 99% of the uh, the wealth. I mean, if you really want to be concerned about where you're putting your money, think about the daily products you're buying. These people that have monopolies on whether it's toothpaste or toilet paper or clothes or computers. Think about this. Go support your local businesses. Support people like us that are being driven by passion rather than just being driven by like, how much can I collect? How much can I collect and hold on to? And then you can watch how people invest in you, you know. I think that give to be another point to be grateful is by giving. And uh, Nathaniel said that before the camera cut off that one of the main reasons he wants to uh, receive more money, and it's not, Timothy even talked about the idea that if we're not making money, we're receiving it. We're being gifted that. It's a blessing by God that other people want to invest in us because we're giving our gifts in exchange of that. But the more that you want to do that, I think the more you need to do that for others. Invest in people that are being driven by passion and love and they're you know, making a way for themselves instead of investing in these 1%, that own 99% of the wealth. Oh, I'm getting a little winded. I tried to cover all these kind of fast. That, uh, that camera was a, uh, that camera turned off was a real stumbling block. I'm trying to, I'm turning into a stumbling, I mean, I'm turning into a stepping stone. You know, your obstacles into opportunities. Be a victor instead of a victim. That's what I'm doing right here. Um, and I'm probably, I hope that answers your question, Yulia, and I hope that makes more sense of it. And uh, just one last thing, we've actually had people that, um, it was a great, it's a great question for us because we've had people that have told us that we need to charge more and that we might be limiting ourselves. We might be cutting off another whole potential clientele base that only looks for things at a certain price. One guy told me that, yeah, we are retreating to be $5,000 or more. Because otherwise, people, uh, certain people are not going to be looking at it. And certain influential people are not going to be looking at our retreats because they're too cheap. So just like um, it's a good question for us to consider about the price. Are our prices high? Um, another, Just on the other side of the coin is are our prices too low? 
are we are we not attracting a audience base that has a lot of money because they're like oh it's only a couple thousand dollars it's not worth my time money to spend at least five or ten thousand dollars on myself for a, for a vacation and that's something to think about so I'm, I really appreciate you for asking that question and maybe we can start doing a, a wider spectrum because we do have a limited amount of time between the three of us and we want to make it where our gifts are really given in the most efficient great way um, and that being said Go check out our previous videos at Ask Us Anything. Ask our next video on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash robbras. Uh, comment below. Um, definitely, if, if you disagree with it, comment below because that's where the real growth takes place is when you have two people that are willing to stick with each other and disagree with each other. We're not trying to surround ourselves with people that we only agree with. And if you don't know what we're talking about, come on and Rob Bras Retreat and, uh, yeah, invest in yourself. And check out that uh, podcast I did with Bird Dog, Brandon Hawk. All right. Uh, thank you, guys. And we'll see you next time, hopefully tomorrow, with the next question of the day on our Facebook page. Peace in. Peace in. Not out. Peace in.